What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another player preview video. This is the second to last installment in this series. We'll finish up with Damian Lillard later tonight. Today we're talking about CJ McCollum and this is going to be a little bit shorter. CJ McCollum, we pretty much know what he is as a player. So uh, I'm not going to go too much into everything you guys already know. I'll give my opinions on a couple different aspects of his game, give him some defensive advice, and then I'll give him some statistics goals. If you're new to this series, then definitely click the playlist in the top of the description box below and go rewatch all the other ones that I've dropped. That's a great series to binge as we head into opening night tomorrow. I can't believe the season's about to kick off. So just jumping straight into things, last season was a tale of two seasons for CJ McCollum. It was his pre-injury play and his post-injury play. His post-injury play wasn't bad, but his pre-injury play was that of an all-star. In the 13 games that CJ McCollum played before the all-star break, he averaged 34 minutes per game and he was averaging 26.7 points per game and five assists per game, shooting 47% from the field and 44% from three. I got asked this question on my last mailbag, which I dropped last night, and I wanted to answer it in this video. Somebody asked if I think CJ McCollum is going to be an all-star this year. If he plays like that and the Blazers are top four in the West, absolutely, because those are all-star numbers. 27 and five on that sort of efficiency is phenomenal. Post all-star break, CJ averaged 34 minutes per game to go along with 21.8 points per game and 4.6 assists. His sh true shooting percentage went from 62% pre-All-Star break to 56% post-All-Star break. So he was still relatively efficient, but not quite so much. He was shooting 45% from the field and 38% from three. So we want CJ McCollum before the All-Star break. That was probably just uh, an example of how a small sample size can skew stats. But CJ said that he wasn't really moving the same once he came back. He wasn't really fully healthy. He wasn't hurt by any means, but he wasn't able to find that same rhythm that he started the season with. So fingers crossed CJ is able to start this upcoming season with that same rhythm without having it interrupted by an injury. As far as the offense with CJ goes, we all know what he is. I think he is an underrated playmaker in terms of a guy that can make plays for others. He averaged 4.7 assists per game last year, and some people act like he just doesn't pass the ball, which drives me absolutely crazy. He does dribble a bit too much, but that was the entire offense last year, so it'll be interesting to see how much CJ McCollum isos and how much he just makes quick decisions with the ball and keeps it moving and moves off the ball himself under Chauncey Billups. So I think his whole iso heavy style is definitely a, a style of play for him, but I think part of it was due to how our offense encouraged that. We had the most seconds per touch. We had the least amount of touches per game. We had the most dribbles per touch. Our offense was very ISO oriented even with CJ McCollum missing a lot of time. So it's not a CJ issue. We'll have to wait and see on how he plays in a new system. And that is something that I'll be covering on post game shows. Outside of that, we know what he is. He's a guy that can score at all three levels. He's a good ball handler, very shifty, can shoot the three ball. His catch and shoot numbers last year were really, really good. He was like in the top 2% of the league. So I can see his three point percentage going up if he's able to get more catch and shoot jumpers. He shot 40% from three last year. So if he's able to get more catch and shoot shots, then I could see that going up to maybe around 42%. I think the sky's the limit in terms of his three-point efficiency if the offense is able to manufacture him better three-point looks than he got last season. So let's talk about the defense. I think CJ McCollum was underrated as a defender last year. I feel like everybody has this notion that CJ McCollum is a very bad defender, and even if he plays good defensively this year, a lot of people will still cling on to their preconceived notions of his defense. And I'm going into the season with a fresh mind on CJ McCollum's and Damian Lillard's defense. And I'm trying to have no biases, no preconceived notions of anything. I will compare how they defend to previous seasons. However, I'm not going to get so caught up in thinking that CJ McCollum's a bad defender that he is unable to prove me wrong. I think CJ is okay on the ball. He's a guy that 
doesn't fully stay locked in either on and off the ball and that causes him some issues but when he's engaged on the ball I've seen flashes of him being a solid defender he's probably never going to be a elite on ball defender or anything but uh, I don't think he's as bad as people say. People talk about his lack of size, and he's definitely undersized for the two, but I don't think it really comes back to hurt him as much as people think that it does. A lot of times when the Blazers are giving up buckets due to CJ McCollum, it's not because he's a little bit too short or because his arms are a little bit too short. Most of the time, it's CJ overplaying and then getting back cut, CJ over helping, CJ not being in the right position, CJ not being able to get through a screen. It's a lot of stuff like that, and none of those things are due to CJ McCollum's height so I go into the season looking at his defense thinking he played okay last year and advanced numbers say he played above average if you look at some metrics I don't think he's quite that good I think he was average to slightly below average but even then I still see a lot of areas that I think he can improve in that he's not unable to improve in because of his height so that's where I'm excited to have a guy like Chauncey Billups as our head coach to see if he's able to foster that improvement out of a guy like a CJ McCollum one of the adjustments on defense CJ McCollum needs to make is when he's playing off the ball and trying to stay attached to somebody moving without the ball a lot of the times he doesn't stay with a foot beneath them a lot of times he'll come up directly next to him and then get back cut he needs to try and do a better job of being attached but getting his body in the right position so if somebody tries to back cut they're kind of running into him and he's able to slow them down a little bit and keep up with their back cut if they do that so just technique stuff like that I think CJ can improve and I'll try and talk about them on post game shows sadly being unable to upload highlights to this channel makes it a little bit harder to showcase some more finite detail things like that but there are just a lot of little things that I think CJ can do better that I think Chauncey Billups did he was a really good defensive guard when he played and I think Chauncey will be able to teach them to CJ so as far as the CJ and Dame can't coexist because CJ is too short and not a good enough defender I'm not buying into that I don't believe that is such a limiting factor like some people seem to think and I'm going into the season with an open mind in regard to CJ McCollum's defense now as far as how CJ McCollum will be used I want to see less ISO maybe a little bit less pick and roll and more of him moving off the ball I think he can be absolutely lethal moving off the ball if he's able to get catch and shoot threes or then if he's able to catch the ball and have a a gap to attack we all know he's a really good ball handler I know he likes to have his defender set up in front of him and then shake them loose with a dribble move but if you just give him open threes off the catch or possessions in which he can curl off screens and go downhill and then pass out or finish around the rim I have a hard time seeing his efficiency and not go up I also hope that Chauncey is telling him to push the pace with the bench unit I think the bench unit is built to run CJ McCollum has never been a guy that's really pushed the pace with the ball in his hands so I'm hopeful that CJ will start to do that with the bench lineup because you got Nas, Anthony Simons, Cody Zeller, Larry Nance Jr. This is the best running bench unit that the Blazers have had in the Damian Lillard era. CJ is going to be playing with them. So he can't be slowing things down with a lineup that's built to run. He has to be pushing the pace and Chauncey should absolutely be demanding that of him. So CJ's role is starting shooting guard and backup point guard actually when he's playing next to Anthony Simons neither one of those guys has to be designated as the point guard they'll take turns bringing the ball up initiating things you don't have to designate one as the backup point and in terms of minutes per game I think a good prediction slash goal for CJ McCollum would be to play 34 minutes per game these statistical goals are based on 34 minutes per game for him I have a goal of him getting 24 points per game which might seem a little bit ambitious but if he's able to get higher quality shots and if he's able to be efficient with them much like he was at the start of last season then I could absolutely see him averaging 24 points per game I also have a goal of him averaging five assists per game he almost got five assists per game last season but finished out at 4.7 in an offense that moves the ball more and will generate more assists for everyone uh 
I have a goal of five assists per game for CJ. The next two goals are efficiency goals for CJ. I want CJ to shoot 52% from two-point land. Last year, he shot 51%, which was a career high. I want him to improve upon that in an offense that should make it possible for him to improve upon that. And then I also want him to shoot 42% from three, which is definitely an improvement, but we've seen him do it before in 2016-2017. CJ shot 42%, and if he's able to get higher quality threes, I think that is certainly an attainable goal for a shooter in the mold of CJ. Now, the final goal I have for him is one that I haven't had for any player, and it has to do with free throw attempts. I want CJ to get four free throw attempts a game and shoot 85% from the free throw line. For his career, CJ only gets 2.6 free throw attempts per game in 31 minutes per game, so he doesn't get to the line a lot. His career high in terms of free throw attempts per game was 3.7 attempts in 2016-2017. That season, he led the league with 91% free throw shooting, and then since then, it's kind of regressed down to a 2019-2020 clip in which he only shot 76%. For his career, he's right around 82.6%. So if he can get that up to 85, that'll be some improvement. And that'll just make CJ more complete as a scorer, a more efficient scorer. If he's able to get to the charity stripe four times a game and then shoot 85%. That's something he's always struggled with. So that's why I have a free throw attempts and percentage goal for him. Anyway, that wraps up CJ McCollum's player preview. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Damian Lillard's will be uploaded at some point later tonight, probably around midnight, maybe a little bit later. And we will be done with this series and ready for the start of the regular season. So hopefully you've been enjoying all the content and hopefully you want to go and check out some of the player previews I've dropped previously or maybe the mailbag that I dropped uh, last night. So definitely go check those out if you want to. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the bell for notifications. And with that, I'm out of here. Until next time, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.